And this is Flux. I'm talking to Travis Baldry of Runic Games. Hi there. Were you a big RPG computer gaming fan? And I did a large amount of CRPG playing on my C64, my old crummy uh, PC with the amber monitor. Were you thinking even as a kid, I'd love to do this and make this one day, or you just enjoyed playing it? Yeah, absolutely. I was, uh, I was programming when I was a kid. And so Diablo, the first game, came out in 95. You know, I played some Diablo when it first came out. Um, that was the year I graduated from high school. I went to college. I played a lot more D2, and then I went back and played D1. When I was looking on Wikipedia, the first line about Fate, your first game, right? Mm-hmm. This is a quote. Fate is a fantasy action role-playing game closely modeled after Diablo 2. Absolutely true. And it was. It was. Uh, I was working in Wild Tangent at the time, and I really wanted to work on a project that I thought that I would enjoy, and uh, that was what came to mind, because it was randomized. I could do something larger with kind of a smaller set of component parts, and I really didn't have much in the way of resources to work with, so it was something I loved and that I thought I would be able to make a decent stab at completing at some sort of quality level, and it was, it was honestly, it was the most fun project I've ever had to do. So you just played a lot of Diablo 2, and you said you went back and played Diablo 1, and you just looked at all the features and said, I like this, I could change this a little bit, I want this to be different kind of thing? Well, it, was, it, it, it wasn't even just Diablo 2. I mean, I played a, so many different CRPGs, and I played NetHack and Angband and, for God's sake, the Kingdom of Kroz. I, I must have spent months playing Wasteland. I really like the idea of taking a character or a group of characters and building them up and wandering out and finding weird things and just that kind of sense of continual advancements. But there's obviously more D2 than anything else in that game. You went on to Flagship Studios, or Flagship North, I guess you were, right, and worked on um, Mythos for a couple of years. Yep, yep. And that didn't quite get out of beta because Flagship had uh, problems we won't get into yeah. now. <laughs> it's lamented Mythos, yes. So then you went on to Runic Games and Torchlight 1 and now Torchlight 2. Yeah, I mean, at each step we ended up focusing on something different, I think. So with, uh, with Fate, it was generally pretty simple. There were very few resources to work with. So it was very, um, it had a lot of that kind of non-constructed feel of uh, kind of simpler randomized levels, sort of like an extruded, an extruded crossword puzzle. And an extruded crossword puzzle. Extruded crossword puzzle. puzzle. You, know, we're all you might leave that off the box. Yeah, it's not, it's not a really great tagline. So we didn't put it on there. <laughs> it didn't have a real skill system. Everything was passive and we had kind of a, a simple, it was, it was closer to D1 spell system really, in the way that you had abilities. But there were things that I wanted to add to it. I really loved having pets in that hack, you know, having my pets steal stuff from the storekeeper. And since there was no way I was in hell I was going to be able to do multiplayer, that you'd be able to adventure with somebody else, and that somebody else could be a pet, and maybe they could do some things that made them not an annoyance. And then with Mythos, um, obviously uh, it was supposed to be a network test, so everything was about, well, how can I get a bunch of people in this and still have it be randomized, and how can you field a bunch of people in a randomized world when you really want randomized levels? Obviously they can't share them all the time. And then we went through kind of a weird, weird series of developments on that and actually ended up with like a totally fixed overworld right before we shut down that then had randomized spur dungeons off of it. And then Torchlight, in some ways, was kind of back almost to fate, Limited resources, limited time. What can we do with this that will justify its existence and make it hopefully enjoyable? And then Torchlight 2 is a little bit different than all of them because we had more time, more resources, and kind of a base to work from. Fishing and pet, and we've had a lot of people commenting in the forums about Torchlight 2 lately. And fishing seems to be a very divisive issue. I don't know if you got feedback on that from Torchlight 2. Oh, yes, we always do. I think that, you know, it's almost in some ways the same argument about the art style. There's always going to be this argument that, oh, it's a little bit too cartoony, and really, you know, I, I want this to be a little more gothic, I want it to be more serious. The game has lots of serious things in it. We needed a look that was, was not Diablo's look and that could be its own thing and that we could produce. I, I think that uh, th- there's a reason we added dynamite to the game. You know, so anybody who hates fishing can just bomb those damn things. Yeah, so there's fishing dynamite you can buy from NPCs now. Yeah, they'll just detonate and get rid of the fishing hole and give you a couple of fish, and you can use them to transport your pet and move on. And you don't have to feel any compulsion to sit down and waste minutes trying to click on a, a constricting ring. The main reason for keeping it, I think, is because we like the mechanism of pet transformation and having a way to gate how you receive those is nice. And also my daughter would be mad if I removed it. When I originally made Fate, I had more emails from people who said, this is great, I just set my kids up in town, and they fish for, for things for me, and then I come back and I have a bunch of stuff. Like you've given birth to your own <laughs> gold farmer. You mentioned the aesthetics of TL2 and TL1. That's obviously a big difference from the Diablo, the, the grim and gothic kind of thing. Yeah. And are there any rainbows in Torchlight 2? I don't think we actually have a rainbow. We're really actually add, more you know, gothic than Diablo 3 in some we ways. We should probably add one. You know, after having played the, the, the D3 closed beta, I, it, 
seems plenty gothic to me. I think that they did a pretty good job with the art style, and I love the background artwork, and it, it, it doesn't give me an overwhelming feeling of rainbows to play. You guys had mentioned that Diablo 3's release was going to shut down your studio for a week or so. Obviously, you're kind of joking about that, but I'm, people there are looking forward to the release next week. No, totally. I'm going to play it. I mean, you don't make these kinds of games if you don't love them. I'm going to play the crap out of D3. I think I played the Barbarian and the Wizard fully through. I didn't finish with a Demon Hunter or Monk or Witch Doctor, but I did play all the classes at least at least up to level 7 or 8 on each one. Do you have a favorite character class or character type? I mean, so like, you know, you make an Ember Mage fan, therefore you love the wizard, that kind of thing? I, I probably put more time into the Barbarian with the wizard, probably a close second. I, I love my pyrotechnic skills, but uh, they did a pretty good job making the Barbarian really enjoyable to smash things with, so. Do you have a favorite uh, character in Torchlight, or are you not allowed to have favorites because you're the um, daddy? I, I like the Berserker, honestly. I, I like smashing things, like I said, with Barbarian and and having speedy melee attacks is is something I really enjoy, and probably like the Ember Mage second, because I also do like my big pyrotechnics. The Torchlight 2 beta has just started, like last week or so, uh-huh. the friends and family got underway. Mm-hmm. How is that going? It's going actually really well. We're continuing to give out chunks of keys to folks and getting them into the game. I think there's three or four hundred games going right now. It's been really useful for finding kind of some of our serverless sorts of issues, uh, a few crashes, uh, we're getting lots of balanced feedback, which is super useful. So you're looking at the beta as a... It's not just a tech demo. I mean, you are taking feedback and making changes. And oh, stuff. absolutely. Absolutely. A lot of the feedback, we, we acted a lot on some of our early skill feedback as we were ramping up. A lot of it we're kind of taking and doing in our main line, and we won't push over to the beta immediately because our real focus is finding crash problems or connection issues or, or things that we can't find otherwise without running the beta and then immediately getting those back into the build so that we can verify that they worked and just collecting as much information on people's experience playing the classes as we possibly can. We get a lot of statistics back on it, you know, where people died, how often they died, what was the monster that killed you, how long did it take you to get to this, um, and all that's super useful for us. It's very interesting to compare the game systems, you know, the skill points and the stat points mm-hmm. and kind of the more old-school, traditional versus what Diablo 3 has gone, kind of this more casual, friendly, but but, you know, with hidden depth coming in later in the game kind of thing. Yeah, I, I think that uh, there's a lot of kind of that elegance of subtraction sort of idea of design, which is pretty powerful. I mean, it works really great for Apple, doesn't it? We subscribe to it in some ways as, as we're refining systems. But I think it's great that we both went different ways because then I get to go play a game that's nothing like the one I made. Torchlight 2 release date. You guys have said not within a month of Diablo 3. Is it <laughs> June 15th and on, and who knows? I, I mean, I don't really have a specific date. We punted until after D3 shipped, so... It seems unwise to pin it down any further. I I can say that things have gone really well and that we've resolved most of our technical issues, you know, basic system issues, and it's really just about uh, remaining polish on the other acts. Kind of a a little extra tailwind after doing a beta like this and getting a lot of response from people. It's sort of energizing as you're trying to finish the rest of it. So we've waited this long and we've spent this much effort polishing it up that we're not going to stress out over a very, very specific date. Our pre-sales went really well. We don't feel like super worried about anything. We're just going to make it a good game and nobody will really remember when it was released after it comes out. We're going to get all our sales at the Christmas sa- steel same sale anyway. You know, That's when everybody buys the thing. Your big sale of Rush will come in six months. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, The, the Thanksgiving and uh, Christmas Steam sales are always amazing. So, Okay, well, good luck with that, Travis. Thanks for your time. Thanks.